What's up fam, Real Spartan here and we're back for part 12 of AC Valhalla. I'm super excited because we're going to go uh, on our quest to, to England. So I'm excited to see what England is going to be. I'm assuming this is a part of the bigger map and where pretty much the whole game starts because I feel like this has just been, you know, the here's the game, here's what we're going to be doing and all that, all that good stuff. So super excited. So let's get right into it. Remember, if you do like a content and you like the the series and any other series that i upload go ahead and smash that like button it really 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 helps but as i said before let's get right into it all right let's see what we got here let's go over to england hey bud the wind favors us we should set sail without delay you made quick work of packing. Well done. The dream of new lands is a powerful lure, as is the promise of glory. But the act of leaving so beloved a home, it brings a sadness to me. Having doubts? No, not at all. The die is cast. Then let fate guide our journey. Are you ready? Ah, uh, yeah. Ready. Let us take to the water and leave unbothered while we have the chance. That chance has passed. Look. Flies on swifter wings than we. King Harold's banner. Seekers, what is this assembly? What are you planning? An exit, father. As graceful as I can. For if I cannot be king in the land of my birth, I will start a new saga in England. Nonsense. Your place is here, son, at my side. There will be other victories soon, other glories. My choice is made, father. Do not hope otherwise. It is easy to lose one's way on the road to glory. Do not let false victories blind you to what is true. You talk of false victories to me, old man? A sad old bear who destroyed his honor with one bent knee. The further I sail from this place, the louder I will sing. I will be his anchor, Lord. No, you must be his better half. May Agif bless your voyage. Hmm. He just, I feel like he just accepted the fact that, you know, we're leaving. like that now this is what you would see you know two you know two episodes in typically on any anything we're at part 12 and now we see the the ac valhalla sign that hey like your, your game is starting that's kind of weird but oh real life
huge disturbances in radio and satellite communications, dangerous bands of radiation around the poles, and as we can all see from our window, an aurora borealis that never burns away. Unfortunately, we are stumped as to why this is happening, and if we cannot find an answer soon, it may change the way we live, the way we communicate, even the way we evolve forever. Dr. Sierka went on to say, Bought you more electrolytes? Ooh, new and improved citrus flavor. Thanks, Sean. How do we fix this? How are you the key to everything? Oh, we can do like a computer. Hmm. You're a long way from home, Eivor. Hmm. Tea is not actually tea, Bex. It's an infusion. It's really just dirty, minty water. I don't care what you call it, Sean. Did you buy any? Of course I did, love. Hey, sorry about pulling you out. The generator was sputtering. That's fine. I needed air. How was the Animus data stream? Comfortable? Felt pretty stable after a while. Good. Just give me a sec and you can jump back in. Another satellite came down. Did you see? I did. One of Abstergo's. That's good. Well, most of North America just lost its GPS service, so... Depends what you mean by good, really. Right. Even when we win, we lose. Okay, we're all set. Whenever you're ready, you can jump back in. Virgo's ruling the world. Please enjoy your stay. Remember, all the garbage must be packed out, and please water the plants once a day. Yeah, I won't remember that. You gonna put this in the fridge, Sean? Of course. In half a minute. Remember, tomatoes go on the counter, not the fridge. Oh. All right. Hello, Layla. Sean, what do you make of the grave out there? Well, it overturns a few hundred years of scholarship about the first Europeans to set foot in North America. Apart from that, it's just a bunch of muddy bones, isn't it? Can we talk about this thing on my neck for a second? Ah, the mood stabilizer. Yes. It's not harmful, is it? I mean, I feel good, but I want to make sure there's no side effects. There shouldn't be. It's only blocking outside signals, a passive effect, so the staff doesn't, you know, mess with you. Sean, what happened last year, I... I had no control over that. I, I tried to resist. I understand. And your old team? Maybe they don't. But we've seen that sort of thing before. Still, if you want to work with us and get to the bottom of... Why the world is about to end for the second time in eight years. Then you wear that thing until we say otherwise. William's orders. I know. It's not a problem. It's just a few more weeks, yeah? Just until we figure this out. You're right. I know you're right. Sean has been busy. Hmm. Problem is, I don't remember a lot of the. It's quite nice. It's soothing. 
a lot of the you know the real life I went through hell to bring you here. type yeah, of um like story so i'm not really sure what she means but i lost control and what happened i don't remember let's have a look i will say it it, it is kind of confusing the whole I don't know. I'm gonna read these. And then once more actively the operator in Rome and Britain between not clear why they left uh, uh Britain's uh something to do with Embers Retreat. Not sure, but we do know it was several hundred years before the hidden ones returned to the island and may be Basimo Haytham our first in half a century. Our archives, we believe there were six main bureaus operating Roman period. Stonehenge are saying it's a Nisu site. Hmm. All right, English locales. Transformation of the order into the Templars as we know them today has always been subject to considerable debate among our ranks. Operating on the assumption that the Templars themselves had some of a complete information of this evolution, but at present, no concrete or evidence has ever made it into our hands. Dim. Templar spy within the ranks of the boat mentions them. From this, we can assume that the Templar Order as an entity distinct from the Order of the Ancients exists at some point in the mid. Okay. Huh. So maybe they're not, like, you know, the same. I lived. I died. And now I sleep. And in my sleep, I dream. And in my dreams, I see an end to the doom that will grip the earth once again. Find the wolf beast. Find the mad one. Find me. And save us all. That's weird. Broadcast for, for nine days in seas. Reveal coordinates of the Norse graveside in New England, USA. So I guess we're in New England right now. Layla, thought you might be interested in this. Conversations that Bex and I had with Desmond back in 2012. Um, December, I think. Just uh, candid talks, that's all. We didn't square any circles or write any beat poetry but he did have some interesting insights into his time in the animus and what it means to be an assassin anyway have a listen you might find you and he had similar experiences so uh well let me know what you think unless it's to tell me i sound like a total prat in these recordings if that's the case just say nothing i mean i did have a slight cold at the time i recorded these that's probably why i sound odd anyway i i Okay, I'm done anyway, so turn off. Turn off. Oh, it's actually just the button. Sorry, here we go. Uh, now we have two Desmond ones. No, no, come on, Sean. Turn that thing off. Oh, hold on. I like what you said there. I want to get this for posterity. Say it again, nice and loud. Uh, seriously? Sure, come on. If nothing else, it'll give me leverage with your old man. Ah, that's your angle. Nice. <sighs> what I said was, I wish I hadn't been born into the Assassins. I wish I had chosen this life. Is that good enough? Sure, but why is that? Because, because choice is the central idea of our creed. It underpins everything, right? It's about free will. It's about seeing the evidence before you and saying, yes, this is what I want. Or, no, this isn't for me. But when you're born into a group like this, or any other, 
like I was. You get mixed signals. You get told over and over again, this is what we believe. These are the rules. This is reality. No deviation. And if you question it, oh, they look at you like you, like you killed a puppy. That's hardly free will. It's a weird irony when free will is your central belief, but nobody wants you to believe otherwise. I don't know how to say it exactly, but I always thought there was something self-destructive about our creed. If free will is the most important moral guidepost we have, we should be free to ignore it. To choose submission, for example. You know what I mean? Like, we should be free to side with the Templars. If it's really my choice, I could do that. Right. It's almost self-refuting. A democracy could democratically elect a dictator or choose to get rid of democracy altogether. Within our creed is the seed of its own destruction. That's what makes it powerful, I think. And fragile. Right, right. The more freedom you have, the more risky it is, you know? Anyway, my dad has mellowed over the years, but he was strict when we lived on the farm. We were in a tight ship. I never got the impression that I was free to choose my path forward. Our creed, our tenets, they were drilled into my head. By the time I was a teenager, I was following these rules out of a sense of duty. This was just what we did. That happens to a lot of organizations over time. The stagnation sets in, you know? The fundamentalism. Yeah. Following the rules becomes more important than achieving whatever goal you set out for yourself. And people start to lose sight of the reason the rules exist. That's called deontology, or a form of it. Following a rule for its own sake and not for the consequences it has. Yeah, but that feels backwards, doesn't it? Well, I think so. Following a rule is the easy part. Praying, taking a sip of wine, munching on a wafer. Rituals that give comfort. But that's just going through the motions. It makes people feel like... like they're doing something. When the hard work is... well, actually getting off your ass and doing something productive. I think people just want boundaries. Tight boundaries. They want to see the four walls that pen them in. I don't disagree. Anything outside that? Anything that makes life more complex? That's scary. That's why I envy you. You chose this life. You went through that process and you decided, yes, I believe in this. Sure. It didn't stop me from being an insufferable know-it-all as a teenager, but I see your point. I would have loved to have been a know-it-all. I knew nothing. Not until you guys found me. Yeah. It wasn't until I met you... Bex and Lucy, that I knew. I knew I wanted to be an assassin. Oh, thanks, Des. Come here. Bring it in, bud. I don't normally like touching, but I'll make an exception now. <laughs> I am not hugging you. You sure? Because I smell very nice today. Can you just turn that off? That's very interesting. You know, talking about the the decision, like, can I follow them, can I not? Maybe I don't agree with them. Maybe I want to be a te Templar. So that's cool to see that Desmond had these um, these thoughts. Hold on, I'll just set this here. Do you guys record everything we talk about? Not everything, but you've been using the Animus so much, I thought this was a good chance to learn some things about prolonged exposure. So I'm your guinea pig? No, no, my guinea pigs are all dead. The Animus was too much for them to handle. Cute. Can I ask you about the bleeding effect? Any recent flashes? Any memories resurfacing? Yeah, the usual things. Ghost images of Altair and Ezio a few times a day. Nothing intrusive, just brief moments. They pass quickly, almost without me noticing. Like a figure in the corner of my eye. Or remembering a dream from the night before. I did have one extended hallucination a few days ago. It was Ezio. He was older, around the time he left Cappadocia. He was standing on the deck of a ship, alone. And through him, I could feel an intense... regret, or guilt. And it felt to me like he'd had a... a loss of faith. In himself, in the creed, like he couldn't keep it up. Couldn't stay true to his ideals. And as I watched him, I thought, 
Is this the moment he decided he was done being an assassin? It felt like it. Anyway, most of my visions have been brief, lasting just a few seconds. They're like complete memories of small moments that appear suddenly out of nowhere, fully formed. It's a strange feeling. Okay, anything else? I'm starting to see Connor now, too. Though I hear his voice more often than I see him. I'm sure that will change. Oh, yeah, and yesterday, just before bed, I had a memory of being on a beach in the Caribbean with a bunch of sailors. Or maybe they were pirates. I don't know. No idea. Huh. We'll look into that. And how do you feel in general? In general? Well, I feel older, for one. Much older. And it's strangely comforting. I'm collecting the memories and skills and thoughts of so many people. I feel like I've lived a few hundred years or more. Is it possible that if I do this for too long, it'll push my own memories aside? That I'll be everyone but myself after a while? It's possible. That's called identity substitution. It's happened before, but it's rare. And someone with your background shouldn't need to worry. My background? You mean someone with my genes? My abilities? You have ECDNA. And that lets you see things and do things and withstand traumas that other people can't. And I can suffer in ways that others can't. That's not something to be proud of. You mean the apple? Yeah. It has a pull, Bex. It tugs at my brain. It talks to me, teases me, drives me mad. And what I did to Lucy. God damn it. Nothing is worth the damage I did. The pain I caused. I know. But you're special. That's the point. I'm not special, Bex. I'm lucky. That's all. I understand. We're assassins. It's our creed that makes us different, not our genes, not our blood. Anyone can join us. That's true. But let's leave that aside for a second. What I want to know is, have you ever had any Isu memories resurface? Isu memories? I don't... don't think so. I can't even begin to imagine what that would feel like. I think you'd know if you did. Maybe one day, we might be able to induce something. Jesus, let's fix the world first, okay? Before we start digging up my ancient ancestors. Deal. With my luck, I'll be related to some third-rate Isu, like... like Sisyphus or something. <laughs> Way to aim high, buddy. <laughs> hey, you gotta... Alright, so this one was talking more about like his visions and what he sees. Isu messengers. Hmm. Here are all the messages. So. Staff of Hermes Trimegistos. That's the Greek pronunciation. Pythagoras, 6th century BC, son of four. No bears. Oh. I think Cassandra. Cassandra was like the main. Her from Eagleberry Cassandra. Oh, okay. I guess Alexius wasn't like the main canon. It was just, um. Cassandra. Interesting. Alright. Feeling okay? Better. But I'm worried that it could happen again. The two data streams. I can't promise it won't. I barely understand it myself. It felt like two minds fighting over one brain. It hurt like a shotgun to the head. Right. There's something about this Viking's DNA sample that feels dense, noisy. Could it be the staff interfering somehow? How do you mean? My headaches, my temper. They started the day I got that thing. I hope you're not making excuses for, you know, your friend. Jesus, no. I'm not. 
Sorry. Just take it easy. And if you feel yourself slipping again, let us know. I'm trying. I really am. Alright, so can we get in it? What is this? Be nice to sleep in a real bed when this is over. This is where we sleep. Alright, let's get in it. <laughs> 